The fittest crowd on earth has packed the tennis stadium at the Stub Hub Center in Carson, California to watch the fittest women on earth take on event number six of the 2016 Reebok CrossFit Games, the Squat Clean Pyramid. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland alongside 2009 CrossFit Games champion Tanya Wagner. And Nikki Brazier is on the competition floor helping you get a better idea of what's going on down there for this sixth of event in day number three of competition and for the first time here at the step up center the heavy barbells are out on the floor it's friday night that means it's fun time for lifting heavy bars these ladies are going to go through an ascending ladder from 165 pounds all the way up to 215 pounds they're going to have to perform squat cleans within two minute time periods if they don't perform the allotted number that they need to they will be uh, removed from this event they have to to perform 10 squat cleans at the 165 to even stay in the competition. And if they can get through all the barbells, then that's what they're going to be awarded the time that they finish. These are your overall leaders, and this heat is packed with women who could track down Jamie Hagia's time to be at a 5 minutes 30.55 seconds in lane number one. You got to keep an eye on Brooke Wells. Brooke Wells just owns the heavy barbells. She is the only woman to clear the deadlift ladder at the ranch on Wednesday night. Her confidence just pours out of her when we see big weights. Also have to watch Cara Webb out of Australia. We know this woman can throw around a barbell. Cara Webb is having Redemption Friday. Last year, this event, the night lift event, did not go as well for her because of the effects of Murph. She's coming up in eighth place for Murph this morning and is looking fresh as a daisy. And finally, your overall leader, Samantha Briggs, not known for strength, but she is trying to hold off Tia Toomey, Tanil Reed, and Sarah Sigmund's daughter trying to do some damage control in this event. One hundred points on the line for the winner of this event, and all these women will be chasing Jamie Hagia, who in heat number two went out and put up a time of five minutes, thirty point five five seconds. And you heard Tanya mention you have to complete ten lifts at one hundred sixty five pounds inside of two minutes in order to move on in the competition. That is the minimum work requirement. When you look at a squat snatch and you look at a squat clean, and you look at twenty five seconds is how long it took Carl Webb to do the first. Five. What Cara did at the regional with 10 squat snatches was a minute and five is how long it took her. If this is going to be faster, the faster movement it should be, she's going to be done that real quick. If you follow Cara Webb on social media, she posted a video a couple weeks back of her doing three touch and go squat cleans at 225 pounds. Now, granted, that was fresh, but that's still impressive regardless of how tired or fresh you may be at that point. Cara Webb, Brooke Wells, Sarah Sigmunds are all through 10 reps, as is Tia Toomey and rookie Christy Armo is right behind them, just one rep back. The leader's name will be highlighted in a blue box at the top of your screen. The movement that the leader is performing will have a blue box around it in the black portion above the athletes names the leaders now on to the 180 pound barbell as every woman got through those 165 pound squat cleans pretty quickly and now it's eight at 180 pounds they have to complete these lifts before the four minute mark in order to stay on the competition floor we didn't speak about transition in any other heat because it really didn't matter as much as here these ladies are going to move that barbell so quick they're not going to use the transition as a rest time as a recovery time it's going to matter how quickly can you add that weight to the bar and move on there are your leaders brooke wells on the left carl webb on the right The one advantage that Cara Webb has is she is slightly shorter, so it's a little bit quicker for her to stand up that weight out of the bottom. Her cycle time is just a bit faster now than Brooke Wells. Annie Thoris, daughter, the two-time champion, has moved up to try and push Cara Webb and Brooke Wells. Jamie Hagia has a time to beat. That's in the upper left-hand portion of your screen. And Carl Webb is right on pace with that, about six seconds ahead right now. So Carl Webb could challenge for the event win here. And Annie Thoris' daughter trying to move up and push for the lead. So only a few reps separating the top women in this fourth and final heat. But Carl Webb continues to crank away. 30 total reps these women need to complete, and Carl Webb is already through 21. 
She just looks so fresh. She looks so good. I mean, all the other women that needed to take breaks needed to really pause and think about it. it. It just shows you how strong of an athlete she really is to be able to add the weight like this and still look so good. There was a similar event to this at the regionals. It's a qualifying event for the CrossFit Games. Same structure, but it was a different lift. It was a squat snatch, and Carl Webb set the event record for that. The top three, Carl Webb, bottom right-hand portion of your screen. And then in the box on the left is Tia Tooby, who is competing in Rio for Australia in Olympic weightlifting. Next to her in the light blue is Sarah Sigmund's daughter. Those two women were on the podium last year here at the CrossFit Games. Tooby finished second. Sigmund's daughter finished third. It was both of their first years here in Carson, California competing. Carl Webb on two. The 205 pound barbell and she's trying to track down Jamie Hagia who has the time to beat at 5 minutes 30.55 seconds. Final two lifts at 205 for Carl Webb who's all by herself on those final two reps on her set of four. She's tightened up that squat. In the previous bar, she was really, her knees started to cave. They really showed signs of fatigue, but she's tightened that up. I'm glad to see that in 205. When you talk about a one rep max, that is in the best situation what an athlete can lift one time at their maximum effort. Now, we got data on over 100,000 male athletes in the Open this year, and according to that data, for you those, those of you at home thinking this looks easy, only 60% of male athletes, so 40%, could not lift this bar once, much less lift it as their last two reps in 30 reps. Carl Webb, one to go. And she has about 26 seconds in which to do it as the crowd comes to its feet to cheer on Carl Webb, who is looking to make a charge up the leaderboard. Carl Webb, hearing it from the crowd and she will win event number six. She had so much power on that final bar. She, she could have over power cleaned that. She was still had to squat it, but there was so much power there. She got so high, so impressive. Carl Webb came in in eighth place overall. She'll get 100 points for winning this event. Jamie Hagia is going to finish second, so she'll lock up 94, the rookie. An impressive finish for her, now Tia Toomey trying to finish up, as is Brooke Wells. Wells on to her final rep, and Tia Toomey is done. So two Australians finishing one and two in this final heat of the squat clean pyramid. Brooke Wells is done, and she is in. Three women have cleared the ladder here in event number six. Sam Briggs at the bottom of your screen who came in with the overall lead was not able to complete the required work inside of a certain amount of time. You needed to get through every barbell except for that last one inside of the eight minutes. So now Sam Briggs is going to watch her lead possibly disappear because Tia Toomey was right behind her and Toomey is going to finish in the top five in this event. Sean, you know, I, looking back at Sam Briggs' history, though, she did still take fourth place in two different years, taking 30 place finishes or more, so it doesn't mean she's out. Well, Sarah Sigmund's daughter cannot make the lift as Christy Aramo in the yellow shirt, the game's rookie now, has cleared it. Katrin David's daughter, the defending champion, still on the floor, as is Sarah Sigmund's daughter. These are two women you would have expected to be pushing for the lead here at this point in the event. I really did, and I know Rome made a great comment that under perfect conditions where these ladies are with these barbells, but I think we're also seeing the fatigues of this being the third day of competition. Tanil Reed in the all blue as Katrin David's daughter stands at 215, and the defending champion is in. 11 minute time cap, so Sarah Sigmund's daughter doesn't look like she's gonna gain 
Any ground on Toomey and Briggs, but Tanil Reed, who came in in third place ahead of Sigmund's daughter, is still on the floor. So Sigmund's daughter is going to pick up points and possibly move into third place overall. And that's where these ladies do not have to take first. They just need to finish above the other athletes on the leaderboard there and make sure that they're, they're doing all they can for those points. Here's Tamil Reed, who still has two reps to go. Sam Briggs looks on. The overall leader coming into this event. Cheering on her fellow competitors as Annie Thor's daughter and Tanil Reed are still on the floor. But plenty of time. Thor's daughter's on the left, Tanil Reed is on the right. And that's a fight. Annie does not like to squat. She would definitely prefer this to be a power clean event. She doesn't, if she doesn't have to squat, she does, she wouldn't. So it's a lot harder for her to get out of that hole. She's strong on the pool. It's more just standing up and getting out of the bottom there for her. Tanil Reed, Annie Thor's daughter, still on the floor. Annie Thor's daughter, the only woman to win two CrossFit Games championships. She did that in 2011 and 2012. And Tanil Reed just cannot get that bar stood up. And that opens the door for Annie Thor's daughter as she will now try her second breath at 2.15. Still about a minute and 20 seconds to go before we hit that 11 minute time cap. There were plenty of women who have not finished this ladder. So now Thor's daughter and Tanil Reed are just thinking about separating themselves from the pack and getting as many points as possible to stay inside the top 10 through six events here. If you're doing the map at home again, they get two minutes on each barbell except for this last one where they do have an extra minute. Annie Thorson are going to make another run at 2.15, and this crowd is on its feet. And Iceland Annie is going to make it! Annie Thorson puts up a great fight, gets herself across the finish line inside the 11-minute time cap, and that leaves Tanil Reed, the only woman on the floor. 30 seconds to go before we hit the 11-minute time cap, and this is where... Points are crucial because there is sort of a log jam at this point in the event. Tanil Reed would love to separate herself from that and get across the finish line. She's going to have to move quick, though. Ten seconds for Tanil Reed. Oh. And it's just not going to happen for Tanil Reed, but a great effort from her trying to get as much energy as she possibly could from the crowd here at the tennis stadium into Step Hub Center in Carson, California. But there's your event winner, Carl Webb. Five minutes, 17.12 seconds. Beats out Jamie Hagia's leading time. Hagia had the best time heading into that final heat. Tia Toomey, another solid result for her. She'll finish in third, followed by the youngster, Brooke.